Uh, ladies and gents, thanks very much for coming here today uh, for the launch of the 2018 uh, uh, Anzac Day match with the Brisbane Lions supporting uh, the cause of Legacy. Legacy is an organisation that supports obviously wounded, ill and injured or uh, widowed uh, spouses, partners, children of families who have served on operations or uh, as a result of their service with the Australian Defence Force. Our seventh Brigade is a, is a proud unit that has been established in Brisbane, tracing its lineage all the way back to the Boer War and the First World War as well. Anzac Day is a very important, iconic event for all of us. It allows us to recognise the sacrifices of our forebears and to bring that into contemporary perspective as well. And that's really what this match and what the Brisbane Lions are doing for us. Legacy has been around since that time. They continue to support. They provide that necessary backstop for soldiers and their families who are about to deploy in operations with the 7th Combat Brigade moving into the ready phase of the force generation cycle. We will shortly over the next 12 to 18 months send up to two thirds of the three and a half thousand people that comprise the brigade overseas in operations. No better way for that knowledge, that visibility to be promulgated than through the Anzac Day test. And I want to thank the Brisbane Lions and I want to thank Legacy in particular for the support that they provide to the Brigade and their families on an ongoing basis. Commander, a question from us. You've had a look at the Guernsey. What are your thoughts? It's, it's, a, it's a good looking Guernsey. In fact, I'd rather wear that on a daily basis than what I'm wearing now. <laughs> Um, no, it's, it's fantastic. This is a, uh, an event that we, uh, we showcase every single year. We're so appreciative of the Brisbane Lions doing it. Uh, hopefully it provides just that little bit of extra motivation for the team to go out and, uh, and, and deal a, a blow to their adversary on the Anzac Day test. Commander, what does it do for the image of, of your brigade and, and the Defence Force in general when you can align yourselves to contemporary sporting teams like this? I was talking to the players about this a little bit earlier on. Um, obviously, two things. Uh, 7th Combat Brigade has an excellent relationship with Brisbane and the South East Queensland community. The work that we do, in some respects, isn't that dissimilar to what the Brisbane Lions do as well, which is to prepare for and go out and succeed against your adversary. The second thing that's really important in that respect you know, from my perspective is the fact that we treat our soldiers these days as elite athletes in the same way that the management and the community treats the Brisbane Lions. So there are many, many parallels between the training that we do, uh, the work that we do to support our players, our soldiers on, on the field of, of, of battle, whether that be a sporting uh, field of battle or whether that be a, 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 a conflict field of battle. Uh, either way, the, uh, the relationship between the players, the relationship between the soldiers and the community is a very tight one and this does nothing other than reinforce that. Yeah, well Legacy has been part of the Brisbane community for over 90 years now. Um, in that time we've been looking after the widows, the dependents of our nation's fallen and our nation's incapacitated. Um, it's been a, uh, a community journey. Uh, we rely on the community of Brisbane to support us both in providing volunteers and much needed support. So this platform provided to us by the Brisbane Lions and the 7th Combat Brigade allows us to get our message across to a community and allows us to continue serving those who are much in need. The um, Gansies this weekend will be auctioned off after the game with the proceeds going towards Legacy. What sort of imprint do you think that will have? Yeah, the proceeds uh, that we gain uh, through this game and through other support uh, from the community goes to uh, many and varied services of Legacy. Uh, the youngest dependent of Legacy Brisbane is three years of age, the oldest is 108. So there is many needs that Legacy see, uh, seeks to serve. So I can assure you the donations will go to uh, children in need, to widows who need support, and to allow us to deliver the services of Legacy throughout the community of Brisbane. We've got the poppies and the rising sun and the 7th Brigade. If that doesn't fire you up, nothing will, I guess. Yeah. It's a, probably a timely reminder that um, what we do out on the field might be hard at the time, but um, we, there's no way we can make the sacrifice that the 7th Combat Brigade and the Anzacs have done for us. So, you know, while, while a lot of the time our game is very arduous, um, there's nothing we can do on the field that will compare to what those guys do. Wearing those sort of emblems of Australian pride and passion and, and hard work, does that resonate with you so that when you're going into a game and you guys being, you know, and forward to, to go out there and strive to, to do well and represent those emblems with people on pride? It does. Um, we're, we're pretty lucky that we play a sport where hard work and resilience are really valued. Um, it's probably a sport, as opposed to some others, where it's more talent-based. Um, a lot of the stuff 
there's a lot of the areas we can gain advantage is actually by working harder than your opponents. Um, so some of these, some of the symbols on this Guernsey uh, probably should remind us that um, if you put your head down and your butt up, then um, then good things can happen. In times in the last, you know, these four games, you have worked harder than the opposition. You know, those first three games, you really worked your way back in the contest. But have you been guilty of times of forgetting that you need to work hard and you and you do need reminders? It, it can happen. Um, the the tricky part with AFL is there's so many components and parameters. So, for example, from the weekend, we a lot of the contested stuff we actually did quite well on the inside, but we forgot to work hard in the, in the running side of the game, running away from that contest. So. Um, Every game we're working hard, but you've got to focus on what you need to work hard on, um, and that's the that's the balance we've got to strike. After getting belted by so much last week, I guess there's two ways you can answer that, isn't it? You go into the shell or you can, you can get back on the horses. Or whatever. That's right, and that's exactly what Fags is driving this week. So we didn't dwell on that game too much. I think um, often we're going to review our games very thoroughly, but this week we viewed um, the weekend's performance against Richmond as an aberration and we're pretty confident that the first three weeks is more what, what we're about and we're going to get, get back to that this week against the Suns. So I have talks from Melbourne that uh, Luke Hodge should have retired. Yeah, well it's not the first time a journalist has got something wrong, is it? So, um, he obviously hasn't been watching the first three rounds. Uh, Hodge, you'd be the first to admit that he missed a few kicks on the weekend, but uh, we are very happy with how he's going. He's been an uh, incredible contributor to our decent form in the first three rounds and culturally uh, as well as on field uh, he's an integral part of our team. So you're not dwelling on it too much but how brutal was the review after a result like that? Uh, we didn't review the game so as I just said like we're trying to move on to this week um, we viewed it as, as not not us and we're, th we're thinking about what we can do this week to get back to, to what we really stand for. So um, you got fish. What does the Q clash mean? Then, Steph, we ask every year. Yeah. We probably get different answers the more it evolves. Like, what, what's the stage is that at the moment? Um, there's always a bit extra to the Q clash. Um, it's it's a pretty genuine rivalry, and and it, it, it's a it's a time where I guess we're not going as well as we want to go. Um, but that's also a great opportunity for us to really step up. Um, we want to be the the dominant team in Queensland, and um, and so there's always a bit extra on the Q clash. You're probably involved in like the most infamous incident in the clash's history. Does it mean any extra to you when you line up against Gold Coast? Um, we're so process driven. So, to be to be honest, no, it's not gonna it's not gonna change the way I go about it. Um, Stephen apologised at the time, and, and I, I have no hard feelings towards him. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm not gonna try to rip their heads off when we play them. So, <laughs> that doesn't change from week to week, uh, depending on the opponent. Mate, your own form has been incredible. A lot of people are already talking you up as All-Australian and uh, you know, at 30 years old you're probably in the best shape of your life and, and playing some of your best footy. Personally, are you really satisfied and how are you feeling about your year? Yeah, and you've, you've, you've taken a year off. I'm 31, so... Uh, just go with it, mate. I should have just gone with it. Um, I do feel good and, um, and I, I don't want to buy into the concept that, um, that I have to decline as, as I get older. Obviously, it'll happen at some point. But uh, I don't want to preempt that, and I don't want to start training lighter and managing myself when I don't have to. So I feel terrific physically, and I'm, I'm going to keep uh, trying to get the most out of myself. Mate, so with this game this week, and talk about the the, the lead up. Do you think Fags will tap into a little bit of the the, the Anzac Day history and and buy into some of the the story there, or is it really again, as you say, process driven? How do you think you'll approach this week? Fags loves symbolism, and I wouldn't be surprised if he taps into it. Um, he's always very balanced and measured with what he does, so he's never going to work us into a frenzy um, to the point where we forget what we've actually got to do out there. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he tapped into it a little bit, and I think it would be appropriate. Just quickly on the Luke Hodge stuff, can you just give us a little bit more about, you know, Danny Frawley saying after one game, time to retire. Yeah. Swanee came out and gave Spud a good whack. But what, and talked about the, the impact he's had. Can you just give us a bit more detail? What impact has he had? It might be one for Keezy as well, just on the young guys and especially the young defenders. Well, he gives them confidence. It's, it's a, the old cliche, but walking out there with Hodgie makes you stand taller. He, he, it's a very tough thing to do to talk during a footy game, and Hodgie does it like it's, it's breathing to him. So um, his directional stuff on the field gives guys confidence to go and play footy. Um, also, he's playing great footy himself, 
he's uh, not officially a leader, but he's really contributing. And he's not just the young guys, but I'm learning a ton off Hodgie on how to be a leader. Um, and he's, he's helping Fags out too with, with coaching. So it, he's, uh, he, he's, his contribution all round has been significant.